All right, Ron, thank you so much for joining me on the Top Agent Podcast. Really excited to be speaking with you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having me on board. Amazing. So, you know, I don't even have to say it, but we're, we're living through extraordinary times right now, unprecedented times with the whole COVID crisis, which has impacted virtually everyone on the planet. So, you know, a lot I want to dive into about how you've been impacted in your real estate business and what your plans are moving forward. But uh, before that, do you mind just telling us a bit about yourself and your real estate background? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, my name is Ron Sally. I'm the broker record broker owner of Remax Millennium Real Estate. I'm also the director of uh, LendingHub.ca, which is a mortgage brokerage as well. And I also have a, a pre-construction uh, a condo uh, brand as well called the CondoHub.ca. So um, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, I would say since uh, I started getting started studying for my license around 19 years old. I got licensed when I was 20 years old. Um, so about seven to eight years now in the business game. And uh, I, this is all I know. This is all I do. I sleep, eat, breathe real estate. Two years ago, I opened up my own uh, brokerage company. Uh, we have about over 60 plus agents right now currently, and we're just growing every single day. And uh, uh, the goal is always to provide value in the marketplace. You come up with a great, uh, and you come up with great uh, strategies. You come up with great ways to understand that how you as a real estate professional in the changing and dynamic markets that we are in, especially now with COVID-19, the whole dynamic is completely uh, changed for a lot of individuals. So it's all about adaptability. And I think uh, our brokerage at Remax Millennium is, uh, is, uh, is a strong testament of, uh, of what we can do in a dynamic market and a changing market. That's amazing. Thanks so much for sharing that. So you're into a lot, you know, broker of record, your own brokerage, uh, you're in the mortgage uh, business as well. And uh, pre-construction, you have a pre-construction uh, like business or setup as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so th that's amazing. So just to really ask you right off the hop, like what has been the impact to not only your brokerage, but I guess uh, all your other businesses and your agents uh, over this past month or so? So first of all, these are unprecedented times. No one had anticipated that all of this would take place. So when something happens, there's a couple of individuals that sort of wait and watch. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what the government does. And I think that's what a lot of us were doing. We were kind of waiting and watching to see how things were progressing. But the year started off so strong and powerful in real estate. I mean, you had February and March, like record breaking months. There was such incredible high sales volume and everyone's like, wow, 2020 is going to be completely a game changing year for real estate where, uh, you know, we were sort of recovering from the downturns of, uh, of, the, of the economy a couple of years ago uh, during 2018 and 2019. So this is supposed to be 2020, right? 2020 vision. Everyone's like, 2020 is going to be my year. And then COVID is like, yeah, 2020 is going to be your year. Let's see about that. <laughs> and that came out of nowhere. Um, what has changed specifically is the dynamic of how we operate. That's how we've changed, how we do business, how we communicate, how we show properties. Um, this is not a financial crisis. This is a health crisis. So really taking all those precautions in place and being over cautionary, that's what sort of changed as well. Now, just like this, on a, on a normal day-to-day -day business, probably you and I would sit down together, have a cup of coffee, maybe a beer, sit down and, and, and have that meeting in a bar. Now, every meeting is taking place over Zoom or, or webinars or in more of a digital format, um, uh, specifically as well. The way we connect with our friends, the way we connect with our clients, even, even seeing properties from the get-go. We would always see properties from a virtual tour standpoint and then decide if we want to see that property a little bit further too. So the dynamic has changed of how we operate and we do our business. That's what's really changed uh, specifically for me. And now as a brokerage to have agents, um, the trainings that we do, like at our brokerage, we were doing training about three to four times per week physically in the company. And we were having lots of guest speakers and we were having things on board. Now, what are we doing? We are doing our trainings online. And I would even say where our trainings levels have increased every day. There's a different level of training that's going on, making sure that they're, that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing in the market. That's amazing. Yeah, definitely. That goes without saying the whole dynamic uh, in how you conduct your business for sure. Um, what about the impact from like the business standpoint itself? Like, have you seen, you know, obviously lower transaction volume and things like that? Or what, what I've noticed, what I've noticed is the number of showings have gone down. Okay. The number of showings. So right now, anyone that's in the market is there for a reason because they have to be. Okay. Or the reason what, or the, what they want to do is they want to cash out and they want to be a little bit more cash rich. So um, what I've noticed specifically is I've seen the investors back out a little bit. 
Okay. Now, now you have the sharks just waiting on the on the standby, waiting for those deals to pop open where somebody desperately needs to needs to sell and just kind of come in and swoop over. But really, the price points and and this is and this has been a strong testament as well. The price points really haven't been largely affected. They're give or take in that in that same range, you know, with an exception of a few properties of the scenario. And again, it always goes down to the the scenario of each seller's right. So it's the need of the seller for what they need to be doing at that point in time. So what I've seen to answer your question is I've seen the level of, 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 of physical showings drop. That's what I've seen. So if you look at the stats, your, your, your booking appointments, cause we have a system we can see, we can see how many book, booked appointments on our listings are, are, are there. They have dropped dramatically. But then if you look at it from the other side of the spectrum, you know that a lot of realtors are doing virtual walkthroughs. So they're not trackable, right? You can't track those stats of who's doing what virtual walkthrough. So you can have one hand where the physical showings have dropped, but you can have that same agent maybe doing five to six virtual walkthroughs of the of that same property or having that that virtual tour. So that's what I've been seeing. I've been noticing a little bit of the transactional drop as well in terms of the number of transactions. Uh, March was still relatively good. Uh, half of March was relatively good. Uh, right now we've seen a, a a strong drop in the uh, in the amount of listings that have come on marketplace. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, you can assume people don't want other people in their homes. You don't want to go into other people's homes right now. So, you know, it makes sense that the showings have decreased for sure. Um, we spoke off air last week about this, you know, we had a great conversation and I really love your attitude and perspective towards this whole situation. Like, you know, you're not just going to roll over and, and complain. Like instead you're going to take it in stride and do what you can right now to adjust uh, and grow your business. So, what have you been doing specifically to stay productive and relevant during the, these times right now? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, you have two angles. You have one angle on, on one side of the spectrum where there's a lot of negativity in the marketplace. And there's just like, man, things are really bad right now. This is what's happening. Our government's gone to shambles. This is all a conspiracy. This is all this. This is all that. We, we, I've been hearing one side of the spectrum yeah. is complete, complete negative stuff, right? Just... Uh, and then, and then one side of the spectrum is that it's, it's, it's a little bit positive. The positive is the fact that we get a chance to, uh, reset. And what that means is that this is that opportunity where we were living in such a fast life. We get to invest in ourselves. Now we get to take that time away, spend with our families. We get to put that same time into doing all the things of redevelopment of our businesses. So sort of to, to answer your question, I think this is an incredible time and it's a strong competitive edge in the real estate industry specifically. Why is it a competitive edge? Because the same agent that was doing X amount of deals that was at the top of the, of the, of the, of the, of the food chain and that same agent that was sort of, you know, trying to climb all the way up, all of them are in that same spectrum. So if anybody ever wanted a competitive edge and kind of take market share or wanted to kind of do something, now would be that opportunity. But again, what you realize is that the top agent was top for a reason because they were doing things that a standard agent wouldn't be doing. And uh, so if, if, if there ever was an opportunity and competitive edge in the marketplace to really show that you are a great and incredible agent and that working with you is going to be an absolute experience, now is that time to show up. You know, in a time of crisis, I always say it equals opportunity. Downturn, uh, downtime equals opportunity. Crisis equals opportunity. As real estate professionals, the biggest thing we can be doing right now is take an active leadership role. Be active and, 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 and socially be uh, uh, aware in our marketplace as well. So be present. That's what it is. Having that presence virtually is the strongest thing that any agent can be doing at this point in time. Because what will happen is when things start to get a little bit better, um, they will be remembered. That I remember these, these, these individuals did a fantastic, like a couple of my agents are organizing a food drive. A couple of my agents have been helping, uh, you know, the, uh, the elders kind of do their grocery shopping. So a lot of people have stepped up and I couldn't, I couldn't be more proud of them uh, to be doing some of the great things that they're doing in the marketplace. So this is that, that time in that marketplace to really reinvest in yourself and start building your business from the, uh, from the ground up, you know, in a much more better and effective way as well. I totally agree with all that. You couldn't have, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, um, I would also add like, you know, as to what you said, I think in times like these where sort of everyone's on, on the level playing field, I think now is a time where a lot of like leaders and authority figures can really emerge 
um, and, and sort of showcase themselves, you know, as that authority figure in their in their market, whatever it is, uh, you know, especially with real estate, just, as you yeah, said. So. Yeah, just to add a little, just to add a little perspective. Now, I'm I'm in the business of of of, of real estate agents, right? I'm in the business of realtors. That's sort of my clientele uh, currently at the moment, and um, so for me, the most important thing is their well-being because I want to know that they're doing. So what I did is I reached out to everybody in my brokerage, everybody in my company. And I said, Hey, how's it going? Can I help with anything? Hey, how's it going? Can I help with anything? We've been so active in making sure that they're doing okay, because guess what? Everyone's business is somewhat affected with COVID-19. And the best thing that you can be doing is be there for those individuals. And then guess what I started doing Costa? I started picking up the phone and any other real estate professional that was in a different brokerage uh, that is, you know, uh, that is not part of my company. I just started reaching out to them as a, as a place of friendliness because I know them and said, Ron, my broker hasn't even called me yet. Ron, this, this person hasn't even called me yet. No, my manager hasn't called me yet from the broker. My broker is not even doing any training. My broker is not even active. My broker is not even picking up his phone and responding to any messages or so on and so forth. So, you know, with all due respect, I think, uh, uh, I think this is where leadership sort of matters the most, you know, and, uh, Absolutely. and, and those individuals that stand up during these times and that's what it is. And that's the best thing we can be doing. Like, look, right sure. now, I'm in a blazer. It's probably what? It's about uh, 11, uh, 45, 12 o'clock. Every day I get up with the same routine. Every day we do the same level of things that we would be doing in a normal business. So if I, if I sit back in my pajamas and hang back, yeah. and, you know, I'm on, you're not on a, this is not a vacation. This is For not sure. a vacation. This is an opportunity to make sure right now our businesses are under attack. And that's what I like to call it. So when your businesses are under attack, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go and crawl and, and, and hide under a rock. You can't do that. You've got to face it head on. And this is that moment to face it head on. Sorry. 100%. Yeah, no, I actually had a couple of things there. I mean, I actually had a, well, first of all, I wish you told me you would have wore a blazer. I would have, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. hang on. But uh, Did, no, I, you're right. This is, this is wartime for business. Like we had a team meeting last week and that's how I addressed it. It's like, you know, we're in war as a business and we, everyone has to step up and, come out not only survive this war but you know be leaders and, and you know really take a step up in the business and um, advance uh, as you mentioned so yeah great perspective for sure um, you touched on it a little bit I want to dive into that so I, I think it, it's so important to think uh, outside the box during situations like this uh, and in general but you have to look at ways to provide value to your audience and network and you know unfortunately when times are great uh, talk thinking about realtors now when realtors think about providing value they always think about like the business related things what's like selling and buying uh, but the fact is there's so many other ways you can provide value to your audience that has nothing to do with like the business part of real estate um, you know and again being in real estate is such a relationship driven business uh, there are a number of ways to provide value uh, you, you gave some examples already about like just calling you know other colleagues of yours that aren't even in your brokerage so um, what are some other ways that you're continuing to provide value? And I'm wondering if you have any uh, examples of some creative ways your agents uh, have been providing value uh, to their clients themselves. I know you mentioned uh, the food drive, which is amazing, but uh, anything, any other examples or anything you want to share? I think, uh, I, I think during these times specifically, uh, every, every agent is, is sort of putting their best foot forward um, to be uh, visibly present in the, in, in the marketplace. If you look at it from two sides, how does business take place? Either one, you're a fantastic agent and no one can do a better job than you can in the marketplace and you deliver results. That's one reason for people to work with you. Second reason people work with you is even if you're not the greatest, they like who you are. They like what you represent. They like your personality and they like working with you. That's the second reason why people would want to want to do business with you, right? What, what, are, what are the three rules that they say? They know you, they like you, and they want to work with you right? They know you, they like you, and they want to work with you. So in this case, particularly, um, what you want to, what, what, what someone should be doing uh, is being visibly present and providing any support that they can possibly happen. Uh, but during these times, I think uh, what some of the agents are doing in my company is uh, um, socially on Facebook, on Instagram, because uh, there's not much physical contact that you can have during these times, other than food drives. Uh, they're, they're, they're reaching out to individuals from their database um, and they're letting everybody know that, hey, we're, they're organizing parties with one another virtually. They're organizing segments with one another virtually. Once a week, uh, we're having something called cocktails night at our company. So nice. 
So, so what's, what's what we're doing other than the helping factor, right? I mean, look, you can do a food drive. Uh, you can reach out to people, check on their well-being, provide support, maybe do some grocery runs, uh, maybe do something financially for other individuals of the, of the, of, of the need. So these are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, but specifically, I think uh, right now as a brokerage, what we're doing is uh, we're really making sure that all of us, our mindset, our hearts, we're all connected. So that way, you know, this can be a time of anxiety. And I know some people are getting a lot of anxiety just sitting at home because it's, it's no one's done it before. So it's just being there for one another is, is one of the largest things that we're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. And just to add to that, I think just being, being genuine in, in your outreach as well. I think, uh, you know, like you said, a lot of millions and millions of people out there are, you know, have anxiety and are struggling, like have lost their jobs. And, you know, if, if you can be genuine in times like these, I think, um, you know, the other person like will, will, will truly remember that. And that's something that's going to stick with them. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it's important just to be, to be real yourself and, and genuinely want to help people because it's really easy to, to fake it and, and come across as fake. So you have to, you have to come from a good place in your heart and, and that's the most important thing, right? The, the first question is about what can I do for you? And, and, and that's what it is. Look, things are always, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. What I mean to say is that um, a lot of people are in need right now during this moment. So, so I'm, a, I'm completely understanding of that. And whatever I am capable of doing or helping them from within my means and within my, my servitude. So I'm, I'm able to, that's, that's, that's sort of the focus right now to kind of make sure that things are okay on the other side, making sure everyone is doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it also seems like your brokerage has been adapting to the, the digital change in real estate landscape for quite some time, like well before this. And, you know, just to look at things from a, like a positive lens, like this could be a great time to sort of accelerate and execute on, on some of that, those digital transformations now more than ever. So like, what are you doing in your brokerage doing to embrace uh, these remote changes in real estate right now? So, so first, first of all, our brokerage, our value proposition was very strong from the get go, right? Just to give you a little bit of insight, we have our own in-house marketing department. We have our own in-house pre-construction department. We have our own in-house mortgage department. We have a, our own in-house videography. We do. We are have the highest level of training services that we offer. We have our own back end portals and, and systems that we've created only for the brokerage as a whole um, to give them every update possible. Like during this time, for example, the transactions change. We were right away the first individuals to provide COVID-19 resources to our company. Everybody had clauses, everybody had agreements, everybody had alterations. The communications kind of shot up immediately on the back end system. Our training was make, making sure that every day we're doing a training sessions and the training sessions would always work with the psyche of the realtors as well. I started booking and coaching calls one-on-one -on -one with every individual so on and so forth. That's, that's one of the things. Now to answer your question, what have we done to sort of change the landscape a little bit? We were strong from the get go digitally and virtually because our marketing department was very present on social media and we were doing all the things that we needed to do. The what changed specifically is our meetings so that we're doing online that changed specifically because we weren't doing that many online meetings. Cause I, I, I'm, I'm an old school guy, right? I like to, I like to have somebody sitting right there in front of me and having that. But now I got a chance to see that we can have meetings online and it's actually a lot more efficient. And this is incredible to do that in the first place, you know? So that's one of the things that changed. The other thing that changed is that you can sell real estate virtually. And that was a big one for me. I said, wow, this is an, let's think about this for a second, right? The competitive, uh, the, this is, like I said earlier, this is a competitive edge in the marketplace. What this means is that this is a chance for experimentation. This is a chance to see, can real estate actually be done without the physical contact, right? So this was that, that moment. And guess what? It's happening. Can pre-construction be sold without actually having to come into the sales center? Yes, it can be done. So now we're selling pre-construction virtually. So everything through, everything through electronic signatures, everything through that. Now more than ever, any agent that was not implementing these things in their business, guess what they're doing now? They're implementing these things in their business. They're learning how technology is used. They're learning how to use these things. And I'm, I'm having agents that are doing phenomenally well every single year, but they do it, you know, their, their own normal traditional way of, of, of selling real estate. And there's nothing wrong with that. The, the disadvantage is that as soon as you get hit with a massive shift in the marketplace, 
I'm getting calls. How do I use the uh, the e signature? How do how, where, where, how do I log in and and you know how where do I navigate this? So you're kind of getting all of those things in the first place. So the biggest shift that 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 we as a brokerage took and what we implemented is completely running your business remotely. That's what we've done. Now for you, you're a tech company specifically. So, uh, you know, we, when we were having a discussion last week, we were sharing ideas of, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is how we're do doing it. And I said, man, Costa, that's incredible because that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on, on completely transitioning the brokerage virtually. And I'm, and I'm like 90% I'm like there, man. There's only a small few things that I have to take care of. And what this yeah. means is that any agent can be part of Remax Millennium without having a physical location in place. Like before I used to get, hey, your office is a little bit too far. Like again, we're in Vaughan, we're in Woodbridge, right? So it's not really, it's not that far depending on where they are. So they say, hey, your brokerage is a little bit far. There's a little bit of drive. But really, you can sell real estate now because we've transitioned as a brokerage a little bit more virtually. You can still do it the traditional way of having that physical when things kind of kick back into, 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 back into the normal way of doing it. And then now the virtual perspective is going to be super strong because any agent, I've created every tool from the deals administration to the processing, to the checks, to the commissions, everything. You do not have to be, you don't have to set foot in my office and you can be running your real estate business from our training to our resources, to everything uh, that we have to provide. You can literally run your business anywhere. And what does this mean? This means that once things kind of get a little bit better and people can travel, agents can actually take time away and be in Mexico sitting on a, on a beach somewhere and maybe doing a deal or being somewhere across the world and traveling with their family and being able to deal. Why? Because Remax Millennium has provided that backend virtual support. So yeah. that would be so that's that's amazing. I, I love that. There, there's, there's such a huge opportunity there and I, I love how that's the direction you're taking it. A um, little different, like we're a remote company, so we've been working remote now for a few years. So the, the, the transition, I, there was no transition for us. It was sort of like business, like normal type of thing. But um, you don't have FinTrack. You don't have FinTrack involved. That's the problem, right? Like you're, you're business. You're, like yeah. we have to. We have to verify the client, right? We have FinTrack yeah. that's involved in our business. So, so there's a lot of hurt. Like even even from the legal perspective, right? You have to know the client that you're working with. You have to verify where they're kind of getting their funds from. There's a lot of FinTrack involved to make sure that transactions are not happening. Otherwise, there'd be a lot of crime or or, or, or money laundering that would take yeah. place if that FinTrack portion was in place. So that's. That's sort of the reason why things were always going to be done physically with the contact. So when you have companies that are always trying to eliminate the role of a realtor, you can't do it because we have strong fin tracks in place and that's going to be a very strong challenge to do that, to get rid of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, for sure. It makes sense. Uh, sticking on remote, I'm curious to hear from you. So, you know, from my experience and just like hiring a lot of remote people from all over the world, like working remote is tough for a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of people have this fairy tale image of what remote work is in their head, like, you know, lying on a beach and like, you know, drinking coffee, <laughs> coffee shops and working yeah. all the time. But that, that couldn't be further from the truth, to be honest. Yeah. And I'd imagine it being especially tough for realtors, just being such a personal business. Um, how have your agents adjusted to remote working? Like I've been hearing a lot of mixed feedback about it. So I'm curious to hear. So let's, so, so, so let's, let's, let's look at the traditional way of doing it. Okay. The traditional way is you're waking up in the morning, getting dressed, doing your morning routine, coming straight to the office at nine o'clock, right? This is, this is, this is actually the schedule that all the, uh, the real estate trainers, everyone in the, this is what we've grown up on, uh, of learning that this is supposed to be the schedule from nine to 12. You're doing prospecting. What is prospecting? Prospecting is hunting hunting for business. You're picking up the phone. You're calling your past clients. You're calling your new leads. You're calling your, you know, uh, your database, so on and so forth to generate business. Then you're supposed to book appointments. So then what you're doing is after you do that from 12 to two, you're taking a little bit of the administration, uh, a part of it, maybe doing files, doing deals, you know, kind of putting this. And then what are you doing? You're going back again to go on appointments or so showing appointments, so on and so forth. That's a traditional way of, 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 of running your real estate practice. So now when you're working remotely, what's the, what's the thing? You'd literally go from your bed, come all the way down to your home office. Like I'm in my home office right now. You, you know, you come down, you sit. And the hardest part is the distractions. That's the hard part about working remotely because your distractions is your dog. Like, I don't know, you probably heard my dog barking while we were, while we were doing this, right? It's just, he's, just, he's barking. And, and these are things that are, even though my door's locked, everything, these are uncontrollable. Yeah. 
So then you have disturbances. You have your kids. If you have kids in the in the place, I know last time we were having a meeting, someone's kid just walked in and just started, you know, running around, and, and they're like, "See, this is the disadvantage of working remotely, <laughs> trying to do that." And you have those. And then what happens is if you if you have your if you have your wife or your husband, uh, and they're saying, "Hey, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you?" So I think the biggest disadvantage for a lot of them is the fact that there's a lot of distractions around you, working remotely. But what I'm going to say to that is create your systems make sure your office is set up properly make sure that you eliminate your distractions because working remotely is going to be a strong quotient of their businesses so that these are the challenge like ask for your question that's what you asked me i think right yeah, what are yeah. the challenges that that individuals that have had when they're working remotely i would say is a distraction that's sort of the biggest challenge that anyone's facing and again the other challenge is if you're not tech savvy um and you know you've uh, you have a hard time using the computer that's also another challenge as well um uh, to do it i think the most basics of anything if you find a quiet space when you're hunting for business you're looking for business you're prospecting i would literally uh if i was in a coffee shop if i was at a sales center if i was anywhere i would literally have my computer i find a quiet space in a maybe a starbucks or somewhere else right away start making calls boom i would have a hotspot on my phone like again you can use wifi right like some sometimes the wifi is slow so I, would, I got a service to the hotspot i paid for it as part of my business expense and i would connect my computer and i would have fast speed internet no matter where i would go whether i'm in a car or whatever the case may be and i'm starting to make calls and i have a book that i can write my notes in or so on and so forth i have crms that i'm using to ca- uh, to track uh who i'm calling what notes i'm updating who i spoke with when was the last time i called them and that's what i encourage agents to do is this is the way you should be setting up your business it's it's called tracking your business when you track your business you feel more in control of everything that you're doing because you know what work you actually did if i can't track what i did how can i improve if i can't track what i did and go back how many people did i even speak to yesterday how can i calculate what level of my closing skills are in place to make sure that i'm doing deals you know so so this trackability is a very strong quotient so setting up your home office is a strong point that i would make sure that everybody does make sure you have your printers make sure your you you have a nice uh, a desktop computer or, or 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 a or a laptop per se so invest in your home office and make sure you have everything so you can work remotely so when you the only thing that you have to get out of sight of the office is for what when you send in deals you can, now you can literally scan from your phone or anything and send in deals to the office so there's no need for you to come to the office now when you get out of your house what do you have to do you have to go to showing appointments if now you can show a property directly through the virtual tour that's a really great perspective so if if you are my client cost so let's assume you're my client and i've signed you up and you say hey ron i me and my wife or me and my girlfriend are are looking to buy something what here's what i'm going to do i'm going to first shortlist everything i'm going to explain the process to you I'm going to give you shortlist and then you and I are going to book a meeting. This is going to be now in in COVID-19. You and I are going to book a meeting. We're going to go on property for property. We're going to go through the virtual tour together and you're going to shortlist. Hey, I like this. Your wife or your wife or your girlfriend's going to say no, I don't like this or I don't like this. And then we shortlist and then we go to see the properties. Not yeah. like, okay guys, let's go see the properties. We're ready to go. So yeah. that's sort of the process that has to take place. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I know that that's amazing. That's uh that's perfect. Just being more efficient. Uh I I I agree with what you said um about pro- having a process in place and like having trackability that's key with remote work and um again, limiting distractions, having a good office space uh, and there's certain characteristics in people uh, I feel uh, that work remotely successfully and just having Uh, a lot of self motivation and discipline and dedication where where you, you don't get distracted easily so i think that's even, key even and- now even now outside my office door i put a big sticky as a do not disturb in a meeting right so yeah. <laughs> i'm thinking sure that no one comes in whatever the case yeah. may be so so you can so small small things like that letting everybody know that guys i am working from home now i am not in the house i do not exist do not ask me to do the dishes and <laughs> this yeah, and no, for sure i am in my office i am working as if it were any other day to make sure that i can provide for all of you guys so yeah. that sort of that sort of having that conversation with your family members is very important letting the kids know letting the husband know letting the wife know letting you know any anyone that you live with in your house with letting letting them know that i am running my business virtually and i expect you guys to be mindful of it from this time to this time 
you know? Exactly, so yeah. No way to the distraction. So go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I was just going to say, I have, a, I have a two-year-old as well. So, um, uh, and I sort of trained him as when the door is locked or the door is closed, uh, he knows, like, don't even come close uh, <laughs> to the door. So, but yeah. Um, curious as well, like, what's your... And I know you mentioned uh, you're doing a lot of training right now and, and just the level of training has increased uh, during this time remotely. Um, mm. But what's your overall message to your team of agents right now? Like, how are you keeping them focused, engaged, engaged uh, right now? And, and uh, because I can see this being tough for a lot of people, like, let's face it. So what's the message that you're, you're putting out there? So first, first is the method. The method is, is having that communication with them. The, uh, the method is uh, uh, being honest uh, and getting them to be honest with the harsh reality of, of where we are in now in the position place. Okay. So the, f- the hardest thing for anybody in the first place is coming terms to terms with reality that this is now the new normal. Okay. People are still saying, no, it's going to disappear. I'm going to be back to my way. So what's happening is now it's a waiting game, but neither I have a crystal ball where I can tell you when this is over uh, and neither you have a crystal ball. And uh, the lockdown was supposed to be over this month and then the lockdown got extended all the way till May. So you don't know if it gets extended again. And then you don't know if what else the government is going to introduce or implement. So there's always a strong ripple effect that is going to be happening in the marketplace where things are going to be changing. So uh, the having that communication and making them understand that that's important. When they understand that, I flip the message again. I go just like that, your clients, your leads, everyone else around you is thinking the same thing that you're thinking about. So now what you have to do is you have to be a leader in the marketplace. You have to show by example. And just like how I called you today to ask about you and your well-being, I want you to do the same with your leads and your clients and your database or anyone else that you connect with and just reach out to them and ask for their well-being. And that's what you can be doing during this moment as well, making sure that everyone is okay around you. That's the servitude that you should be offering in the marketplace. You're not salesy. You're not offering for services to buy or sell. You're not doing anything like that. You're strictly from the place of your heart. You are asking for the well-being of everyone else around you. So first, making sure that they're uh, coming terms to terms with the situation because the hardest thing is coming terms to terms with that this is the way things are going to be. So what does that mean? Now we have to adapt. And then we're letting them know that, look, the next 60 to 90 days, it's going to be a hard time on the revenue so what do we have to do to make sure that our revenues don't drop our our you know financials are doing a little bit better than what they can be doing rather than not do anything at all so there's uh there's things that are certain and then there's things that are uncertain i can't control covid19 i can't control what happens uh to the stock market i can't control what happens else around me that's out of my control so why am it why am i worrying or stressing about things that are out of my control I can only focus on the things that I have control over. And what do I have control over? Right over here. I have control over my mind. I have control over my hands. I have control over my feet. I have all control over anything that I can be doing during this time. So rather than spend it and exhaust it on anything else that I cannot control, I'm going to focus on things that I can control and I can do. Because here's the thing. Transactions are still happening. People are still buying. People are still selling. The world is still moving. We're just moving a little bit different. Yeah, I love that. I think uh, you you hit that spot on. Like, I, I it's good to be to face come to terms with the situation and just not be naive about the situation. And I think that's um, a big mistake I've been seeing a lot of realtors make right now. It's just like think like there's going to be a date where like everything just snaps back to normal, and you know that's really not going to be the case. Like, you really have to be proactive and thoughtful of how the business is changing around you um, and the strong will survive as with any um, you know economic downturn or any bad event that takes place so uh, be realistic as you said and just coming to terms I think that's very important um, so you touched on it previously this all took place right before uh, what was gearing up to be one of the hottest real estate markets um, the GTA Greater Toronto area has ever seen. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on how and when the real estate market will bounce back from this? That's a, that's a great, that's a great question, man. That's a great question. Uh, everyone's some sort of always trying to time the market, <laughs> right? When things are going to be a little bit better. Let's look at the stats. If you, if you go back in time and you look at 
uh, what happened after 2008, 2009 debacle, right, of the housing market in the U.S. Let's go back in time and take a look at what happened when SARS came to Canada uh, during 2003, during that time. What happened to the property value? What happened when there was MERS or when there was Ebola or there was any health? This is a health crisis. Like I said earlier in, the, in, the, in, in, in their discussion, this is not a financial crisis. So even during 2008, uh, 2000, 2007, 2009, during those times of the housing market, um, Canada wasn't really that affected. We did have an effect, but we didn't have a large effect as what happened in the U.S. Uh, per se. So if, if I look at it right now, there's a strong pent-up demand that is taking place. Uh, we are undersupplied. You can go by the employment ratio. So you can go by what's happening right now. So when, when things do get a little bit better, that pent up demand is going to shoot up. I feel like our real estate prices are just going to straight away climb. Now the challenge is that there's a softening in the marketplace right now. And I think that softening is going to continue a little bit. Um, and what I mean by softening is that, is that you, you may not get a lot of listings. You may have buyers that sort of are not there that don't need to be. Like I said, they're, the people that are in the marketplace right now are the ones that need to be in the marketplace right now. So a lot of people are, uh, uh, you know, preserving cash or holding on to cash, but then there are individuals who are selling because they need to sell people who bought investment properties that now they cannot hold. So they need to sell, right? If things get bad for a, a group of select individuals, guess what's happening? A lot of us have equity stored in our properties for those of you bought right? Where these are our assets that have equity. So either you're going to refinance, you're going to try to pull out that equity to service your business or do what you need to do to run your day-to-day -day households um, uh, activity. Or what you're going to do is you're going to sell, you're going to cash, or you're going to hold that cash. And you're going to wait for an opportunity when things get a little bit better. So there's two, two, three different ways of looking at it because the ripple effect will take place. And now I've been seeing more and more reports of, uh, of businesses shutting down in downtown Toronto related to the restaurants. You know, famous, uh, famous coffee shops and famous uh, uh, eateries are, are being shut down because they're not, they're failing to pay rent and the commercial landlords are like, nope, you pay rent or you, or you get out and they, and they do a foreclosure. So my, 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 my prediction is that I think real estate's gonna be okay. That's my prediction. I think real estate is gonna be okay because a lot of people uh, will be transacting during this time um, because they have to transact and they have to be there to do something. What about all the people that bought uh, properties, uh, sorry, what about all the people that sold properties before the pandemic actually kind of, uh, you know, reached its height, they still have to buy. So they're still in the marketplace and looking for, for something. Um, so to give you that perspective, I think that's there. And I think uh, if you ask me, there's a lot of great deals right now too for pre-construction. I'm not saying this is a sales pitch. What I mean to say is that a lot of developers have eased up on their deposits. So if somebody was really looking to be in the market, this is actually a good time to be in the market because you want, you don't have that much competition. Okay. So the properties that you would have been going for that would have had probably like, you know, eight to 10 to 12 multiple offers. Now it's not there. So the, you can, you can sort of get a little bit more competitive edge. You may, you may not get that strong negotiation on the price because the price is what the price is, but at least you get that biggest advantage of being there and being able to opt in to buy that property in the first place. Um, so, so that's sort of the situation. Like I know some people that one of my agents I was in a conversation with, they said, you know, uh, he just listed a, uh, a, a three, 3.1, $3.2 million listing. And he says, well, the, the seller really need to sell this year, but he, he wants to get out ASAP because he doesn't know if the price is going to come down a little bit more. And then he doesn't want to, you know, so they, they want to cash out and they want to have cash on it. So anyone who needs to be in the marketplace, if there's any investors that are there that are looking for deals, now's a great opportunity because they can get those deals on low deposit structures in pre-construction or maybe find a property that where somebody really, really needs to sell and maybe pick up a deal on the price one way or the other, right? Yeah. So yeah. Those, those, those things are uh, from the buyer standpoint and the seller standpoint as well. So that makes sort of a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Make, makes a lot of sense. I agree. Um, really quickly here, for the realtors listening that are determined to get through this crisis better and stronger than ever before, if you can give those folks one message or piece of advice, what would that be? Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. This is that time to really, really build your business, um, strengthen the base, strengthen the blocks, do what you need to be doing to move forward. Because when this is over, I'll tell you something, if you're not prepared, it's going to be tough for you. Because those individuals who are preparing right now, 
like my team and my office were prepared. So we're making sure that our agents are there. So, and if this wasn't, and what I, what else I would say is, is that not only invest in yourself and prepare so that way your business can skyrocket. What I'm going to say is that be in the right place and the right environment did your brokerage or your company stand up for you during these times? Look at who was actually there for you during these times and moments. So this will give you a strong perspective of where you need to be. It's sort of like working with any great company. And like, for example, you run a great company, Costa, and your, and your company offers really great value and you have a really great product at hand. That's why I always recommend that, you know, your service and your, and your, and your company because you guys do a great and fantastic job. Just like that, if I'm giving you a recommendation, you're going to have leads or clients that will give realtors a recommendation. Hey, use, use my person. Hey, use my realtor. Hey, use this. They're great. They're fantastic. They were really during those times. So just like that, that's very important. So, so be where leadership is strong, be where your brokerage is very active and has played an active role and are actually providing value in the marketplace. So if you needed to change your businesses, uh, build your businesses. Maybe the environment that you're in right now is not making sense for you. Um, really consider an investing, like I said, coming back to it, investing in yourself and your business. So that's, if there ever was a moment, now's that moment to really do it. So, and, and you have that opportunity. Well said, very well said. That, that's perfect. And thank you so much for the kind words, by the way. Um, Ron, I do want to be mindful of your time. Uh, I just want to sincerely thank you for taking the time to come on the podcast and speak with me. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing your business continue to grow and flourish. I have no doubt about that. So, um, continued success, stay well, keep healthy, and, uh, let's definitely do this again sometime, uh, hopefully in, in person. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it, Costa. Thank you. Take care. Amazing. All right, Ron. Thanks so much.